what's up guys so today i am making the what i would like to call the dream desk but this one is wall mounted because we're trying to save a little bit on the floor space and this one should be a really good one i'm happy with the way this came out and there's all sorts of things that's in it now although this looks really simple i put a lot into this so you know i got things like the integrated cup holder a flush mounted outlet with a couple usb ports on it and i also have a secret spot on the desk that you can wirelessly charge your devices and you already know how it is i got the lights on the back of the desk so led strips going around that and on top of that i'm trying something new in this video i'm going to be wrapping the entire desk with vinyls on top of that we're also going to have some troubleshooting in this so if you're excited totally excited as well to show you guys how this desk was made today video is brought to you by this plate they make all sorts of really cool artwork on super thin metal that's mounted to the wall with magnet and i'll give you a little more details on that later on in the video but for now let's get started Now I'm gonna get started by ripping down a sheet of plywood and one tip I always like to share is when you're cutting plywood one good thing to do is put some support on the back end that way when you make the rip all the way through it should prevent the plywood from falling. Now all of these cuts can be made using a circular saw but since I've cut everything down to a manageable size now I'm gonna take a few pieces over to the table saw and rip those. Now once everything was cut down to size, I'm going to build a frame that's going to support the desk. And most of this build will be constructed using wood glue and also a nail gun. And after the frame was built, I then applied wood glue to then secure it to the top. Now once I had everything lined up, I used the brad nails to hold the frame down until the glue set up. And as a way to hide the open ends of the plywood, I attached a 1x3 frame going around the desk. So during this stage in the game, I was planning to finish this off with paint. And the thing is, I was trying to minimize the amount of holes I needed to put in the trim. So I only tacked a few nails in it and then I added clamps. And while the glue is setting up on that, I set the desk off to the side and then I can address the back panel. So this part of the desk is going to be quite simple. It's just a sheet of plywood wrapped with a frame that's centered in the back of the plywood. And I'll use the same process on this where I apply wood glue and just nail everything together. So I need to make a quick template and I'm going to use a piece of scrap wood that's the same size as the back of the frame. I'll use this to drill the hole in the desk and also the back panel to take out the guesswork. Before I even started this section I had this all planned out and I still drilled the holes on the wrong side of the wood. I was supposed to drill those on the inside. So I'm going to discard that idea altogether and just go ahead and drill the hole that's big enough for the bolt. With the T-nuts on the inside, it's going to allow me to tighten up the bolts on the back of the desk and pull the T-nuts even tighter into the wood. There was a lot for me to think about in this part right here because I needed to make sure that I had access to the bolts that I was going through. Now I used the template that I created earlier to mark the holes in the back panel. Now after drilling out the pilot holes, I can then double check to make sure that the bolts sit flat. We don't want that to interfere with the French cleat system. And as a way to eliminate multiple cords and also adding a unsightly setup on the desk, I'm going to install a cabinet outlet. And you can find all the links to the tools and things I'm using in this video down in the description or in the written article. So after cutting out the hole, I wanted to make sure that everything fit nice. Even though I'm using a Dremel Multimax for this cutout, you can also use a jigsaw and that works just as well. And with the hole cut out, I just need to do a test fit. Now drink holders are quite taste specific, but I think these serves a really good purpose in minimizing desk bills. So at first I eyeballed the location of the drink holder, traced it out, and then I realized it wasn't right. So I then made a few measurements and then drilled out the hole. So due to the thickness of the desk, the cup holder actually bumps into the plywood below. The way to fix that is to route out that section and this way it can sit down into that wood once the bottom is on. Now I could have used my plunge router to route this out and that would have been a lot easier being that it had the wider base. But if you have a trim router, it's probably best to leave a little island in the middle to use that as support, then come back and use the chisel and shave that down. I did one more test fit just to make sure everything was good before I moved on. 
Now I should have put the wireless charging in its place prior to attaching the frame because this made it more challenging than it should have been. Nonetheless, I got it routed out and the next thing was to do was to route out a section for the power cord. I also pre-drilled a few holes in the bottom panel so I can attach it later. And while I was at it, I also went ahead and drilled out the back panel for the power cable to pass through. I sanded the entire desk down to get it prepped up for applying my finish. It was around this time where I decided that I didn't want to paint it and I wanted to try something new by wrapping it with vinyl. And I already had this on hand because it was for another project. And prior to this project, I'd never used vinyl before so I was a bit nervous on what I was going to run into. So after applying the first layer, I actually learned some things along the way and I was able to address the second piece a little better. So there may be a lot of things I'm doing the hard way, but this is what worked for me at the time. So what I did first was flip the board over and made sure I lined it up from the backside. I then applied a few pieces of tape to hold that in place. Then I peeled off some of the backing. Now this stuff is quite sticky, so after fighting with it and getting it loose, I was able to start applying it to the surface. And the important thing to know is that this doesn't really hide anything, so anything you have in your work surface is actually going to show through the vinyl. Before cutting this material, I tried a few pieces on a small piece of scrap wood just so I can figure out the corners. I first made a straight line, then I came back from the corners and pulled out to create a triangle. I tried many different techniques, whether it's using a heat gun or just different ways to wrap it. This one seems to be the best way for me, so this is what I stuck with. So now looking back at this, the piece that's up in the air, I should have cut that off and allowed the side to just wrap right over. Now I think it's fine the way it is right now, but it's just a little thicker than it would have been had it just been that one layer. With the corners now tucked in, it's a little easier to adhere the sides. So this was the first time I got a little nervous in this project was when I created this bubbled area right now and I thought for a second that man I don't know how to fix this but I grabbed a heat gun just to experiment and applied some heat to it and also spread it out some and wow what a difference that actually helped out a ton. So I managed to get extremely close, almost eliminating that vein line. Now I didn't want to overdo it, so I called it quits. So one thing I learned here is that the heat is actually your friend. It can help you solve a few problems. For the bottom of the desk and also the back panel, I'm going to use some black paint to finish that off. If there were one thing that I would change in the design is the location for the outlet that I have and also the grommet that I'm drilling in right now. In a perfect world, I would have shifted these about 4 to 5 inches away from the center. The beauty of using vinyl is that you don't have to wait on paint to dry. You can basically apply this stuff and just continue to finish up the project. The LEDs are USB and they only come in limited lengths and this kind of puts some restriction and limitation on what I wanted to do. So instead of wrapping the entire frame, the LEDs are just going to wrap a small portion of the bottom, the side and also the top. The connector on the LED needs to end up inside the frame where I can then plug in the USB controller. So this part of the French cleat system is going to be permanently attached to the back panel. So just keep your eye on the miter end and don't mount this backward because if the glue dries, it's going to be nearly impossible to remove it. I'll need to remove some of the material from the back panel. Doing so will allow the power cable to pass throughout the back and not interfere with the wall mounted piece of the French cleat system. 
So now I can go ahead and attach the back panel to the desk using the T-nuts that's already in the desk and also using these quarter inch bolts. Now this is the look I was going for. I wanted to make sure that the power cords were clear and had free movement. To get the cleanest look, locate the nearest outlet and then pick a location for your power cord to exit from behind the desk. I drilled a few holes underneath the desk to route the power cable over to the wireless charger and then held that in place using a piece of scrap wood. Instead of installing a bracket this way, I'm going to turn the bracket sideways and install it inside the frame to provide additional support for the frame to the back of the panel. Now I'll address this once I'm completely done with the desk, but the bottom's just going to go on simply like this and then you're just going to add the six screws in it to hold it in place. After finding the studs in the wall, I can then transfer those marks over to the French cleat. I then made a mark 28 inches from the floor, which marks the bottom of the French cleat. Now I did get lucky, I was able to line up the French cleat system to three studs in the wall. As you can see, I drove two screws into each stud. All there's left to do is to set the desk on the French cleat. To add additional support, I'm going to do this later, but I'm going to add some 6 inch bracket that looks just like these and push those a little further in so you cannot see them. And of course, if you made something like this and you have it out in an open space, one way to tackle the power cord is to just use wire mold and that would cover majority of it. The other way is to just leave it as it is, but there's also another way that's a little more complicated and it would give you the cleanest look and that's to wire an outlet from the desk directly into a local outlet. Unless you have experience with electrical, I would definitely steer you away from that option. So if you force the bottom, it will go on, but I don't want to put too much pressure on the power cord, so I'm going to remove some of this material right here and then put the bottom back. I'm proud to say that this one is complete and all I need now is some cool artwork to dress up the space and that's where my friends over at this plate come in. And what you can expect is high quality prints right onto metal, no need for power tools or anything, just mount it on the wall with magnets. You can choose from three sizes, the medium, the large, and also the extra large. With over 90,000 artwork to choose from, I'm sure you'll find something to fit your space. And depending on the size you get, they're going to send the right amount of magnets to hold that piece on the wall. It does come with instruction which is rather simple. You peel, you stick, and you hold this on the wall for about 20 seconds and you're ready to go. To learn more about this plate and check out their huge catalog of artwork, just go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. And if you find something you like, go ahead and use my promo code DIY20 at checkout to get 20% off. I'd greatly appreciate it. Now I'm really happy with the way this came out. This is a perfect desk for just about anyone, especially if you're trying to save space. This desk is actually going to the use of a kid, so I am going to eventually add the two brackets under the bottom so that no one climbs on the desk and get a little too crazy. Now this is a good size workstation and I think it's actually a fun space. Wish I had something like this when I was a teenager. So you can quickly forget how much is actually in this desk by just looking at it at first sight. You know, you have the wall mounted feature. You also have the LEDs wrapped around the back. You have the hidden wireless charger that's built into the desk, the cup holder, the integrated outlet with two built in USB ports. And last but not least, it's wrapped with vinyl for easy maintenance. If you guys have any questions or tips for me, let me know down in the comments. So I would totally like to know what you guys would have done different and what you'd like to see in the next version of a dream desk.